Three, two, one. All right, we're here with Tim Floyd, his coach. UTEP. Uh, what are your thoughts? So you got a lot of new faces on your team this year, so let's talk about that. Brand new team, uh, basically. Uh, three players that got in any ball game a year ago were back. Uh, Gay McCulley, who started about 50% of our games. Uh, John Bohan, who started a handful of games. And, uh, and Mike Pettis. Um, very few points returned, very few rebounds, and uh, 10 new players. And uh, that being said, looking forward to it. Uh, young guys, um, for the most part, not highly recruited players, but uh, we think a little better on maybe the level uh, they were recruited at. And, uh, you know, a lot, a lot, probably more questions than answers at this point, but uh, uh, we're going to throw them to the fire. Uh, going to play a very competitive schedule. Uh, for a new team playing uh, on the road at UNLV, on the road at Oregon, uh, in the uh, Diamond Head Classic, we open up at Clemson and, uh, in the same side with uh, Kansas State and Xavier, at Colorado State and Mexico State twice. But uh, uh, you know, I think a team that uh, is going to grow this year. We're trying to think long term uh, with what we're doing. We went out and signed uh, uh, eight freshmen, and uh, we're going to let them grow and make some mistakes this year. You mentioned Bohan and a uh, guy from around East Park, Lancaster, was quite a prep player and I know played some quality minutes for you guys last year. Talk a little bit about his development and what you expect from him this year. Well, you know, he got some experience a year ago. Uh, he he uh, is a guy who uh, obviously had to get stronger. I think he has gotten stronger. Uh, has to uh, take some mistakes out of his game. That's part of what uh, he was about as a freshman. Um, and knows that in order to, to have the kind of career that he wants to have, that he has to eliminate, uh, you know, some turnovers and uh, uh, some mistakes in his game. But uh, I think that the year of experience will help. Kevin Perry, also a guy that's a dual sport kid. Uh, talk a little bit about him and, I guess, uh, you know, when you expect him, I guess, and, and what to expect from him. Yeah, you know, Kevin uh, played a lot of basketball in high school. Uh, had the benefit of going through our practices a year ago, so everything will be more familiar to him this year when he comes out. Uh, we were right into the heat of the schedule a year ago, and it was very difficult to go back and reteach. But I think he absorbed a lot, and uh, this year uh, may have a different role and probably get to the floor and help us. What's your philosophy in general just on dual sport kids like that football, basketball? I'm all for it. I mean, you know, um, you know, remember the Charlies, Charlie Wards and the uh, Julius Peppers. Uh, in fact, we uh, got a guy coming next year that will be playing for the football uh, team uh, who's a very good player. I cannot mention his name. I just remembered we haven't signed him yet, but uh, uh, big advocate of him. He came close to getting it. Boy, he did. I was starting to blow that one. With all of the new faces you have, what, how good can a team be this year? What do you expect from it? You know, um, I've been down this road a couple times. Um, at the University of New Orleans went through it my second year. Um, went through it um, at Iowa State my second year. And um, both those seasons turned out okay. Um, so we're not going to sell them short. Uh, we're going to approach it like we would any other year. We're, uh, we're going into every game expecting to win. Uh, that may be delusional at this point, but uh, uh, I hope not. You know, we've got a bunch of competitive guys that were part of winning programs that, that won state championships and city championships. And, uh, our biggest philosophy was trying to put ten new guys together that were not used to getting beat. And then if we got them together and threw them out there in today's new college world where experience doesn't seem to be as big a deal because we're seeing uh, younger teams and freshmen contributing more because of uh, all the attrition that we have in our sport, uh, uh, you know, I feel uh, like they're there because they want to play. And uh, they're there because they viewed it as an opportunity to play. And uh, hopefully we were right with our evaluations. Coach, has the uh, conference come to a point now to, with uh, you having a young team and uh, being able to not only just compete but actually have a shot at, at, at winning this year? Well, you know, I don't, I don't know that we've come that far with the likes of Marshall and, and Memphis and Tulsa returning so many experienced players that have been around the block. I, I think uh, what we're going to see in our league, I predict this year, is a team that can, is, uh, or two that will advance deeply into the NCAA tournament because of the experience returning at those three programs and with Central Florida. I shouldn't uh, uh, forget about those guys. Uh, uh, you know, people forget that Central Florida was ranked you know, uh, I think 19th in the country and 14 and 0. 
at one point and have them all back. Uh, so uh, I, I don't know that we can uh, compete with that type of experience this year because uh, we could very well see a, a team uh, uh, like Butler, like VCU, uh, that was senior laden, uh, uh, very, very talented players out of this league emerge this year. What do you see the league trending in terms of in NCAA bids? Well, I think that uh, when you have eight teams in a league uh, that were in the top 100 in the RPI, there were only two other leagues that did that, the Big Ten and the Big East. Um, if the selection committee pays attention to that and the number of returning players in those programs, um, it should only go upward. You know, I think that maybe there were some lessons learned last year. Uh, one thing that uh, I did pay attention to is that there had only been five teams since 1984 with 14 losses, total of five teams with 14 losses go to the NCAA tournament. Last year we took five in one year. Um, then you see the Butlers and the VCUs and teams that have learned how to win versus teams that have learned how to lose. And uh, maybe they'll pay more attention to teams that have learned how to win, which you're going to see a lot of in Conference USA this year. A little bit about the quality of the coaches in this league. And you know, you've been at different levels and, and other places, and a lot of other coaches around this conference have been in other places and kind of found a, a great home in this conference. Talk a little bit about that and, and just the fraternity in this league. Well, I, I think that it's a league where uh, you've got guys who have done it and proven it, and then you've got other guys that are young and hungry and um, and as talented as the guys that have done it and proven it. Uh, I watched that last year. Uh, Doug Wojcik in that category, Donnie Jones in that category, Tommy Herring in that, that category. Uh, a guy that I think did the best job of anybody in our league last year was Ed Conroy. And, uh, and he, he finished uh, down towards the bottom. But it's all based on what you get out of your talent. And as his talent uh, continues to go, go upwards, uh, you're going to see uh, one of the great coaches in the country down at Tulane. Uh, and then you've got your Larry Eustaces, who's a National Coach of the Year, and a runner-up National Coach of the Year. Um, uh, James Dickey, who I competed with back in the old Big 12, uh, who's extremely talented. Uh, it's it's a league that I think can compete with any league in the country in terms of the X's and O's. And Josh Pastner's uh, certainly uh, got stardom written all over him. You know, with the, the the great start that he's had to his career. So, and I hope I'm you know not forgetting anybody here. But uh, uh, all I can tell you is those guys jumped out at me last year. Thanks, Good. Thanks, Coach.